Mel Kuyper was talking about his big board, right? This is my NFL crossover. And I thought it was interesting that Kuyper was saying it's no longer unanimous that Trevor Lawrence is the number one overall pick. There are people that believe that Justin Fields should be the number one overall pick. What we do know is that the Jets still got it. And if you don't want to play for the Jets, tell them not to draft you. Because the, the draft, you can take a leave as far as I'm concerned. But looking at Kuyper's big board, he still got Trevor Lawrence at number one on it, right? He's actually moved Fields up from three to two because Sewell was at two. But Sewell hasn't been playing football, and that's, I think, the reason that he's sliding. But he makes a good point about Trevor Lawrence, which is in six games, Lawrence has improved his completion percentage to 70.7%, and he has 17 touchdown passes to just two interceptions. Those are like Justin Fields' numbers from last year, quite honestly. And he looks good, and he looks good without Justin Ross, which I think is the best thing that could happen to him. And as far as his draft stock is, you can look around and say he doesn't have the best wide receiver available to him or would be available to him if he had not had the kind of surgery he needed to miss the year. But he still has Amari Rodgers. He still has Joseph Ngata. He's still got Travis Etienne, as bad as Travis Etienne has been running the football the last couple of weeks. And Cornell Powell is beginning to blossom into a real threat down the field. Meanwhile, Justin Fields has been ridiculous. 13 touchdowns this man is responsible for. He's thrown just 11 incompletions all season. 86.7% of his throws are completions. Also added to that, you know, the two rushing touchdowns. So he's really got as many passing touchdowns as he does incompletions, which is just stupid. I want the Atlanta Falcons to do whatever is possible to go get Justin Fields and hire Eric bien because I would love to see Chocolate City just getting it in like that because I feel like Atlanta gets... A- a- Atlanta's miserable. Atlanta's miserable. Like, the Falcons franchise is miserable, basically since Mike Vick. Because Mike Vick made that awesome. Mike Vick and Algie Crumper and Work Done made them awesome. Add Roddy White to the mix a little bit later on, right? It's fun. It's a lot of fun. And it ain't been fun for the last few years. Like 28-3, we still remember, right? We don't think of that as the Patriots winning. We think of that as the Falcons losing. But Biennemi, who has been passed over for jobs that he should have had even last year, also was going to be able to help you get a draft incentive because the NFL actually approved this. They're going to give incentives to teams for the draft that hire and develop minority coaches and front office personnel which gives Arthur Blank every reason to go and try to hire Eric Bieniemy to be his full-time head coach, even as I understand that Raheem Morris is, is his interim, but that ain't necessarily a good look. You know, going down the draft board, you still got Jamar Chase at number six. Kyle Pitts moves to seven. Like, Kyle Pitts actually has a – he's listed as a tight end because he's 6'6", 239, but, like, Calvin Johnson's that big. I look at Calvin Pitts, I'm going, why not just reclassify the wideout? You'll make more money. Like, that's where I would want to get drafted. I would want to work out with the wide receivers because that's also where Dan Mullins is lining him up. He's lining him up on the numbers and letting that man eat. 17.3 yards per reception. Those are wide receiver numbers. He's a top 15 overall draft pick before this season started. And after his destruction of the Southeastern Conference, he's my wide receiver one ahead of Jamar Chase, who's 6'1", 200. Short, fast dude. I like short, fast dudes. I like short, fast dudes that caught 1,780 yards receiving last year and 20 touchdowns. I also like short, fast dudes that destroyed first-round draft pick A.J. Terrell. But I like Kyle Pitts better. I can throw the football anywhere on the football field to Kyle Pitts. He coming down with it. He's that code. And what he did to Georgia, my God, right? Like, (sighs) if not for the concussion, it probably goes for 200 yards receiving. Somebody still, like, Somebody being Mel Kuyper still got Trey Lance as number eight overall on the draft board. But I think he's going to fall into that Jordan Love tier of getting drafted because I, you, you can't draft him and expect to play him right away. He's got to have the Julian Love or Jordan Love experience. Julian, Julian Love is a cornerback. Patrick Tertain at nine. Sam Cosme at 10. Jalen Waddle at 11. There's a short, fast dude that you might actually take before you take Jamar Chase based on what he can do for you in the return game and that he fits the Tyreek Hill prototype a little bit more easily than perhaps Jamar Chase does, right? Zach Wilson, 13th on the draft board ahead of Sean Wade. I know Sean Wade ain't been off to a great start, but that ain't necessarily good, dog. Like, that's not, nah. 
Terrence Marshall at 21. Eh. Wyatt Davis at 22. Rondell Moore at 23. That's cold. 24, Mac Jones? All right, we need to have us a good conversation about Mac Jones at some other point, but the A.J. McCarron comp, he's going to have to overcome that. I think that he's good. I don't know that he's as good as Joe Burrow was, but his numbers say that he is. I don't know that he's as good as Tua Tagovailoa is, but his numbers say that he is. Yeah, man. Like, it's it's weird, you know? See, Doc Winston O'Bigley already getting in. All right, Doc, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this easier on everybody. Appreciate you for staying up on that, Doc. Uh, Kyle Pitts should be the first pass catcher, to be honest. Yeah, no, 100%. And I really want him to get, be reclassified as wide receiver because he'll make more money. Like, that's the way that the scale goes. They don't pay tight ends nearly as much as they should. Though, Travis Kelsey, for me, is more valuable than Tyree Kill. Because there ain't no Tyre, there ain't no Travis Kelsey's just walking around out there. I can find a short, fast dude. Might not be able to find him with the kind of world class speed that Tyreek Hill has, but I don't need them to be as fast as Tyreek Hill. I just need them to be faster than you. Like people forget, the coldest slot receiver that Tom Brady ever had was a short, fast dude, not Wes Welker, and it's not Julian Edelman. It's Dion Branch. Okay, Dion Branch was the coldest and people forget that like he's the precursor to all the short fast dudes that you talk that you remember right let me see uh cowboys would absolutely tra trade up to go get trevor lawrence i don't know about justin fields because uh, marketing as much as i hate that because i would love to see justin fields with a star on Let's see uh what else you got in here wonder if kennedy brooks comes back i doubt it I doubt it. Let's see. Let's see. What did Randy Jackson want to get my take on? I don't know. If we get Florida versus Bama in the SEC championship game, what do you think? I think Bama's going to mop the floor with them. Straight up. Full stop. I picked Alabama to win the national championship in January, dog. Hello? That was with Mac Jones and Bryce Young at quarterback. That's how I feel about, about one Alabama. See, Mike Par Michael Parsons is the cold best defender in the draft. No, he's not. Might be the best pass rusher in the draft. He's not the best defender in the draft. I still think the best defender in the draft is a corner, right? There's a reason why Jeff Okuda went number three overall. Plus, I sit on the selection committee to pay Paycom Jim Thorpe Award. I believe defense backs beat all. If I got somebody that can take away your best wide receiver, your best pass catcher, I can beat you. That's what Darrell Rivas did for like an entire career. That's what Champ Bailey did for an entire career. That's what Stephon Gilmer did last year to win Defensive Player of the Year. It wasn't a pass rusher. It wasn't Khalil Mack. It wasn't Aaron Donald. It wasn't J.J. Watt. It was doggone Stephon Gilmore with New England. That's how cold they were. And they were so cold that through the first half of the season, we were talking about the New England Patriots as being one of the best defenses of all time because Stephon Gilmore took away one side of the football field. Like, don't, don't come at me with no Michael Parsons, the best defender. He's good. He ain't, he ain't no DB. Nah, man, Patrick Sertain is going to be up there. Uh, Sean Wade need to get it together because I got to put together my, my semifinalist list here in like a couple of weeks. And I'm, I'm really staring at Sean Wade going, you got to show me something. Cause I, I don't, I don't see it right now, dog. Like Richard LeCount cold, been so cold this year, man. Like I was riding so hard for J.R. Reed last year cause he was cold. And Richard Count said, nah, I got this. You might actually see a third straight year of a Georgia defensive back being on the finalist list because he's so cold, right? And you know what it is with Patrick Sertain. There, there are folks that think that he's another Marlon Humphrey. Could be. Could be. If he just turns out to be another Patrick Sertain, I'll be with that because there are people that are old enough, myself included, that remember Patrick Sertain is the best player to ever come out of Southern Miss, period. Brett Favre, not the hell with Brett Favre. Patrick Sertain would have been picking off Brett Favre left and right. Patrick Sertain was the truth, was the absolute truth. And I love more that Patrick Sertain straight up punked Ed Orgeron. Just straight up punked him. I thought that was the funniest thing of all time. 